Last night, the NFL is sticking to current draft dates. Despite a recommended delay by a subcommittee of general managers, the GMs are concerned that they aren't going to have enough time to do all the things they want to do, like player physicals and psychological testing and all the other information they want to do as they are home like most of the rest of us. And that would include, of course, our Diana Rossini, who joins us live this morning. This was your reporting overnight, Diana. Let me give you the, uh, the floor here. What else can you tell us about this decision to leave the draft as is? Well, I can tell you that this subcommittee made up of seven GMs in the National Football League made a vote six to one to make the recommendation to Roger Goodell that they move the NFL draft. They didn't give a specific timetable of how long they want to actually move this. But the thought is this right now, nobody knows what to do. Facilities are being closed. Coaches can't meet with players. Those draft visits can't go down. There's so much personal relationships that are built through this draft where teams feel comfortable when they see and meet these guys face to face and essentially that's not what can happen right now and I can tell you there are head coaches all around the league as well who have shared their thoughts about this and they feel the same way and that's they feel powerless at this point and we all know how important it, this draft will be for building these organizations and if they feel like they're at a disadvantage which some teams do because there are some facilities like in New Jersey and California who've been closed and will remain closed because of state laws that compared to other organizations that they'll be able to have their guys come to the facility so they'll be at a competitive advantage there so there's a lot in play here but as of right now the draft is still uh, during the original date here of April 23rd to April 25th and, and again Roger Goodell has also told all of the teams they have to close their facilities by this evening perhaps in a way to try and keep some teams from having a competitive advantage now I've got sneaky big news and, and this maybe even not that sneaky it's big news in a statement to ESPN the agent for Trent Williams says the relationship of his client and uh, the Washington Redskins has reached a point where the team should trade or release him. Diana, you've been working this story. What can you tell us? All right, well, let's go back to a few weeks before the combine. And this was when the Washington Redskins were shopping Trent Williams. And they were out there trying to figure out a deal there. And they had no takers. But then Washington, a few days after the combine, basically after when all the business is wrapped up, that is when the organization allowed Trent Williams' agent to go find a trade partner. And now I've spoken to both Washington and Trent Williams' people about this. And it seems right now they cannot come to an agreement because Washington they don't want to just give away a seven-time Pro Bowler or former captain of this team. They want to deal where they feel that they can get value. Whereas Trent's agents believe at this point Trent has been such a good player for this team. He's had such a good relationship with owner Dan Snyder. He believes that at this point that Washington needs to cut ties and move along. Maybe they're not getting the perfect deal here, but they're getting something because his agent was able to go out and find clubs who are willing to make this deal. And in the end, this is really what the takeaway for me has been on the Trent Williams situation. He doesn't want to be remembered in Washington as a bad guy because he never has been a bad guy. He's revered there. He's considered an elite player. He wants to be able at one point go back to Washington, perhaps maybe even be in the ring of honor and appreciate his time in Washington. He's tired of this getting ugly and they are hoping to move forward here. But as of right now, it doesn't seem like Washington is going to let him go at this point. All right. And then one more thing I want you so plugged in to what's going on there in Washington. I, I want to put this up on the screen. As it stands now, our friends at Caesars Sportsbook in Vegas have Washington with the third best odds to land Tua Tonga-Vailoa in the draft behind only Detroit and Miami, who are tied for the shortest odds at plus 105. And, Diana, we've sort of been saying the draft starts at three this year, but now we're sort of looking at the possibility of it starting at two. You're so connected there. How would you assess the chances that Washington seriously considers taking the quarterback at two? Yeah, I don't, I don't think we're going to see an Arizona Cardinals part two situation here where you have a new regime come in here and say, you know what, let's just scrap the quarterback we drafted last year. I think it's a really low chance they go for two. I know head coach Ron Rivera is very committed to building this team through the draft. We saw what they did during free agency, which wasn't tons, and they still have a lot of positions they have to plug. So at this point, I feel comfortable that to say that Washington isn't going to go after two at that number two spot. You're with Chase Young sitting there. 
Springer, who everyone thinks is going to be a great player. Diana, stay safe. Thank you very much, and we will certainly keep checking in with you as the news continues to develop. Let me go back to Orlovsky, and I'm told we do have Dominique back, and so we're happy for that. And, and Nick, I've not had a chance to ask you this question. What do you think, as we sit there looking at, at Tua, and I'll even throw Cam Newton into this mix because Ron Rivera was his head coach in Carolina. What do you think the Redskins should be doing about the number two pick and the quarterback situation overall? Well, if you're going to take a quarterback with some injury history, I think Tua is the one that you take as opposed to uh, Cam Newton because Tua has potentially a long career ahead of him. But in the situation that they are right now, I think they're better off going with Chase Young, who I've heard compared to, to um, Julius Peppers. If you can get a guy like that that's going to be an all-pro type of player as a cornerstone in your defense, you definitely go and do that. But I, I think Diana brought up the Cardinals situation. The Cardinals have kind of changed my mind. I was kind of opposed to them taking another quarterback in back-to-back -back years. But I, they've shown me a situation where it works. I don't know that Ron Rivera is the same offensive mind that, that we think of Cliff Kingsbury as. But I do think that if you think that, that Tua can be Drew Brees, which is what people are comping him as, and you think that uh, – that there that Haskins is a mid, medium medium quarterback or somewhere around that then you make that jump because it's worth it but I'm not the one to take that injury risk when you have a guy who looks like he's going to be a perennial perennial pro bowler and a cornerstone to that defense you go with Chase Young and you hope that a new regime helps uh, Dwayne Haskins become the quarterback that we saw him be in college what do you think Danny yeah, Greeny, I think that, first of all, we, we all need to stop making the comparison of the Redskins and the, and the Cardinals from last year. First of all, the Cardinals hired Cliff Kingsbury, who had really been on a six- or seven-year chase of Kyler Murray recruiting-wise. Like, he had loved Kyler Murray as a player for a long time. Two, he runs a very unique system, a very unique style of offense that is suited for a very specific type of player. He was never going to mesh well with Josh Rosen when it came to scheme. So it was the needle in a haystack type of marriage. That is not what Washington is. If you told me Steve Sarkeesian, who's their play caller in, at Alabama, was going to go be the Washington Redskins head coach, then we could talk about Tua and number two. So we need to kind of separate those two. You do not draft Tua if you're two of Washington. You draft Chase Young. Now, if you want to tell me that you're going to sell everybody that you love Tua and you hate Dwayne Haskins because you want to trade that pick and, and get a bunch of uh, draft picks in trade for that, we could talk about that. But you should not be entertaining if you're I Washington to a tongue of Iowa. Support Dwayne Haskins, draft I, Chase Young. Go ahead, Dom. Real I quick. agree with you. I, I agree with you, Dan, on the conclusion, but the reasoning is where we disagree. You don't draft the quarterback based on your scheme. You draft the quarterback and then you build the scheme around him. So if you think two is going to be great, then you find someone to make him be great. You don't worry about whether he fits into your system. And I think the same thing is true. Uh, I think that's probably why they went to get Cliff Kingsbury because they like Kyler Murray. I don't think it was the other way around. All right, we're going to leave it there for the moment. We have much more to do. We also have basketball conversation coming your way. LeBron